I am Jules Legui, I'm a PhD student in computer science. I'm working on de novo molecular generation problems. It consists in automatically searching for molecules that satisfy your desired property. More specifically, I work on problems in the domain of molecular materials for which the evaluation of the properties depends on costly quantum mechanics computations. This cost is actually an obstacle to the exploration of the chemical space. The evaluation can be accelerated by, by predicting the properties using machine learning models. However, these models may fail to correctly evaluate molecules that are very different from their learning examples, which may actually limit their ability to discover new materials. Here, we propose an optimization method that is based on a machine learning model, the surrogate function here, and that estimates the values of the property to be optimized. It is used to select promising molecules that will be evaluated by quantum mechanics, here. At each step, these new results are inserted in the training dataset. So, the surrogate is trained again with molecules that are more and more relevant for the property. New candidate molecules are obtained at each step by using an evolutionary algorithm to maximize the expected improvement of the surrogate function. This is very similar to Bayesian optimization, but the evolutionary algorithm allows us to generate solutions in the whole chemical space. We evaluate our method on the maximization of the HOMO energy. We show that it can find high-scoring molecules using less call to the costly property than a purely evolutionary approach. To conclude, our approach based on a surrogate model that is learned iteratively can limit the evaluations and thus the optimization time for a costly property. Hello everyone and thanks for joining me. My name is Mark. I'm a PhD student at the University of Oxford in Garrett Morris's group and we're looking at graph neural networks for binding affinity prediction and how much structural information really is necessary to build good models. The aim of the project is on the one hand to look into that relationship and doing different tests on different levels of structural information. On the other hand, we're really interested in COVID-19 and Pro as well. So we've built a curated data set of all the main protease inhibitors for all the different coronavirus families we could get our hands on into one big data set that we use for training and testing to find good inhibitors. For the methods, uh, our graph neural networks ligand-based are in a two-branch setup inspired by graph DTA, where the protein side is encoded as a 1D sequence, so no structural information, 3D information required. And we're benchmarking those models against the sign method, which is the best structure-based method we could find tested on PDB bind. For the feature sets, uh, as I said, ligand-based features for graphs, but also we came up with a new contact-based graph that we call ECIG that is heavily inspired by the extended connectivity interaction features, ECIF fingerprints. On the results end, the PDB bind refined set 2016 data is shown on the left. The best model is a bag model between ECFP fingerprints and our ECIG graphs uh, with a 0.81 Pearson correlation coefficient. And most interestingly, it does not lose performance when testing it on dot structures, which is normally the biggest disadvantage of structure-based methods is that they really fall off when looking at docked poses. For the MPRO model, unfortunately, we're losing uh, performance in comparison and the ECIG models are absolutely terrible as you can see, but we have some decent models, for example, the GATNAT model, Caveat here being that we actually haven't hyperparameter tuned those models against the MPRO data set yet. Those are PDB bind tuned models, and this is a work in progress. So hopefully I can come back to you in a few months time or a few weeks time with a, a full uh, set of models tuned for MPRO. Yeah, if those results are interesting to you, you want to talk about data sets or MPRO, please find me at poster 19. Thank My you. My name is Bohdan Pinkowski. I am R&D project manager at Elizafil. I'm going to present our work towards autonomous microfactory. AI and flow chemistry integration. Our objective is autonomous production units, thereby we leverage two core technologies, artificial intelligence and flow chemistry. This will give us benefits of continuity of production, highly controllable processes resulting in high quality products, industrial risk mitigation, reduced environmental impact. We have built a proof of concept microfactory for isoamyl acetate synthesis. We have 3D printed reactors and purification line. We have provided real-time monitoring and remote control. To study autonomous pilot feasibility, we use deep reinforcement learning. The agent interacts with the environment and it receives rewards for every action. Our AI agent is able to observe product conversion while controlling flow rate and reactor temperature. We have built an environment which is a digital twin based on laboratory experiments. Now, our agent 
receives no explicit instruction. It has to figure out the best strategy on its own. First, we fix the desired thermostat temperature and flow rate. There is no adaptive control. Therefore, as the reactor cools down, the reaction conversion also drops. Next, we inspect how adaptive agent responds to the change in environment. When reactor cools down, it adapts the flow rate and the conversion remains intact. We have also verified that the agent is extremely robust to the sensor noise. We conclude that the approach is robust to environmental changes and to sensor noise. Interestingly, the agent learns to anticipate the future conversion outcome with respect to the residence time. We have a single algorithm to gather all sensor inputs to react in real time. Our results suggest a reliable ground for the physical implementation. Hi, my name is Jenka and I'm a PhD student at the University of Edinburgh at the group of Julian and Michel. This poster displays our ongoing work on optimal network generation for free energy perturbation, or FEP in short. FEP space, as seen in figure three, was constructed to serve as a model training set to represent all realistically possible molecular transformations in FEP. The reliability in standard error of the mean, or SEM, across quintuplicate FEP simulations correlates well to its original ligands in the band phase. See figure four. We aim to open source this data set for the community to use and drive the field forward. Additionally, we've constructed a twin neural network approach, see figure five, that has dual inputs, one for each ligand member of a given perturbation. Through a transfer learning approach, we're able to predict FEP reliability and are able to feed this into perturbation network generator algorithms. Although this is very much an ongoing work, we expect to outperform state-of-the-art network generation methods using our FEP reliability predictors. If you're at all interested, Please do come see me at Poster 23. I'm looking forward to discussing this work further. Hi, I'm Strijit and I'm excited to share my research on representing cell morphology readouts in grid form to leverage neighborhood feature correlations. The cell painting data set is an unbiased systems biology measurement of various cell statistics across six different stains, five channels, and eight constituent organelles. The problem here, however, is that the numerical features are highly correlated and difficult to interpret biologically. Here, we predict cell health readouts, where a specific reagent is used to measure various aspects of cell health, including proliferation, mitosis, DNA damage, etc. We generate a TSND visualization of the features across each perturbation, meaning each point on this TSND map represents a feature. This clustering therefore represents features having similar effect across all perturbations. The jonker volgenet algorithm is used to fit these results into a rectangular grid by an optimizing of a cost matrix. These matrices are then trained using efficient net B0 architecture. Using gradient-based localization, we generate a coarse localization map representing regions of importance in these images for each true positive sample in the test set. In results, we observe a mean 14% improvement in balanced accuracy in 19 out of 70 cell health assays, particularly in ones related to mechanisms of cell death. Further, we see that similar regions, similar endpoints, such as those related to DNA damage, show similar regions of importance, particularly in intensity of DNA in cytoplasm channels. These features could show or signify DNA fragmentation, for example. In future, we will try to work with larger data sets to explore new perturbation space, particularly as there are no chemical structural models to predict effects of genetic perturbations. We will try to understand regions of this morphology space to better understand what they signify biologically and try to predict mechanism of action of compounds using cell painting screens. Thank you. Hello, my name is Gregor Sim and today I would like to talk about our work on reinforcement learning for molecular design guided by quantum chemistry. The overarching goal of this line of work is to accelerate the search for novel molecular structures with machine learning. Currently, so-called generative models in chemistry suffer from the following two key limitations. First, they are based on graph and string representations of molecules. As a result, they lack 3D information that is the position of atoms in space and can only generate single organic molecules. Inorganic systems and molecular clusters remain out of reach. Second, they strongly depend on an existing data set. Unfortunately, in chemistry, such God-given data sets are typically not available. Further, it has been shown that generative models of this kind tend to generate molecules that are really quite similar to the ones the model has been trained on. 
These observations conflict with our initial goal of exploring new areas of chemical space in pursuit of novel compounds. With Molgen, a novel deep reinforcement learning approach, we aim to address this limitation. In a nutshell, we propose the first reinforcement learning or RL approach that can build molecular structures in three dimensions. It constructs molecules by iteratively placing atoms in space. Since it's based on quantum chemical principles, it is applicable to any chemical system. Further, Molgen does not suffer from dataset dependence as the RL agent autonomously generates its dataset through strategic exploration by interacting with an environment. In our papers, we show that Molgen can indeed not only build organic and inorganic molecules, but also solvation clusters. With that, I would like to thank my collaborators, my thoughts of funding, and you for your attention. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. I am Vivek, a postdoctoral researcher at the Delft University of Technology. I lead the theory and automation research line in the inorganic systems engineering group led by Professor Evgeny Apitko. Uh, we work on data driven design and discovery of transition metal complex based catalysts. Um, a data driven high throughput computational screening workflow can be used to discover amazing catalysts that are located somewhere in the vast chemical space of molecules. Such an approach can immensely benefit from automated, accurate, and rapid methods to predict the um, 3D geometric representation and uh, thermochemical and electronic properties of transition metal complexes. The first uh, part of the presentation is about rapid and accurate prediction of a thermochemical property PKA of transition metal hydride complexes, wherein we use literature data to build a database of experimental PKA of uh, transition metal hydride complexes and we combine density functional uh, tight binding calculations with machine learning approach to predict the experimental PKA and our model performs at uh, par with uh, density functional theory calculations using a hybrid functional. Next I present ChemSparks which is a Python based tool to perform automated post functionalization of a given chemical um, scaffold and we use ChemSparks in conjunction with DFTB calculations and DFT calculations to explore the chemical space of magnet pincer complexes. And we were able to answer some relevant questions with regards to the hydrogenation or dehydrogenation chemistry, such as the choice of base and the linear scaling relation between the free energies of various intermediates. We also explored the quality of geometry generated from ChemSparks against DFT and DFTB calculations. And we also used these geometries to directly predict uh, electronic properties such as uh, um, homoluma gap of magnet pincer complexes. We show that uh, chem sparks can be used on a diverse array of scaffolds uh, such as a complex molecule case shown here. And I look forward to discussing further with you on my poster, poster number 28. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amal Thacker. I'm a PhD student in the Raymond group at the University of Bern. And today we're going to take you on a journey from the enumeration of chemical space to the assessment of synthetic feasibility using AI. We're going to do this by showing you how we use browser-based tools to facilitate experimentation in the WETS lab. To do this, we focused our approach on a set of 1,323 diamines, enumerated such that they contained up to two rings with ring sizes between five and seven, and up to two amines in both exo- and endocyclic conformations. Our primary question becomes how do we select and synthesize the compounds that were generated? To do this, we've applied a template-based retrosynthetic planning tool called AIZINT Finder, which we developed in collaboration with AstraZeneca. In contrast to previous approaches, we prioritize not only the reactions leading to the desired transformation at each step, but whether they can be applied in silico. This has two key benefits. First, it speeds up the tree search as it negates an additional substructure check. And secondly, it enriches the prioritization due to more information being present in the output vectors. We use this approach to predict multi-step synthesis to the compounds in the diamond database, resulting in routes for 56% of the compounds. We display the database using a T-map, which allows for coloring the space and molecular descriptors and statistics relating to the predicted synthesis routes for each compound. The interface additionally provides links to a database of pre-computed routes for synthetic chemists to examine, such as the one shown here. The key step is a Beckman rearrangement, and routes could not be found with the standard AI's int finder, MIT's ask cause, and IBM reaction. The route shown here was successfully synthesized in the wet lab. We've shown you how we use AI-based synthesis planning 
to facilitate en experimental engagement in the wet lab. Thank you for listening and looking forward to our discussion. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my short talk. I'm Moritz Walto from the Sheffield Chemoinformatics Group. And my poster is about imputation models and also about interpretability of DNN models. I'd like to start with a brief introduction to imputation. And yeah, so basically imputation means filling gaps in a sparse data set. And yeah, related to uh, toxicity data, that means we have like here a couple of uh, toxicity assays, like here the columns of this table, and then uh, a set of compounds. And yeah, compounds have been measured in some of the assays, but not in all of them. And the gray cells here indicate missing data. And then the aim is to fill these gaps with a model. And yeah, the difference to a standard QSA model really is that in a QSA model for test compounds, we only have chemical descriptors available. Um, but yeah, with an imputation model, a test compound may have been uh, tested already in uh, some of the toxicity assays, and we can use this additional uh, information in the model. And yeah, just to give you an overview of what is included in the poster, so there will be an explanation on how feature net models work, which are one approach for imputation modeling, and yeah, then a comparison of performance scores of uh, user models and imputation models on a data set on AIMS mutagenicity, and then also some illustration on an approach for interpreting DNN models that I'm currently also working on. Um, yeah, then I'd like to thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about the poster later. Dear colleagues, I am very excited to present you my work, which you can see on the screen. Such approach allows rapidly define the manufacturer of the unknown sample of mineral filterizer and draw a conclusion on a single concept of quality as standardness of physical and chemical properties of the object. The identification will help to recognize counterfeit products and defective mineral filterizer in the sales markets. The energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence method was used for analysis. The essence of the proposed approach is to compare the spectra of a known sample with the previously built database of quality products of known manufacturers. For each sample, the spectrum was recorded and each of 3000 energy channels of the spectrum was used as separate features. Values of feature are normalized by mean and dispersion. Then the two principal components were calculated and come in clusters were built. Each cluster corresponds to a well-known brand and manufacturer of the filterizer. Furthermore, the chi-square criterion and the average Euclidean distance inside each cluster were calculated. Based on the combination of these parameters, a conclusion is made about the manufacturer and quality of the filterizers as a numerical feature. We use a set of five different filterizers brands and four encrypted samples for experimental validation of the model. As the results, the brands, of the, the brands of all encrypted samples were defined correctly and the numerical quality criterion were calculated. The analysis time of one sample did not exceed five minutes. Thank you for the attention. Hello everyone, I'm Shubham Vishnoi and my research interest is all about developing the computer codes and processes that are fast and detailed enough to provide with predictive models to guide synthesis of novel peptide-based drug substances. Across atmospheric to cold screening scales of modeling from nano to microseconds, we do a high throughput screening with peptide libraries using classical MB simulation approach to predict the binding affinities and then in order to characterize the peptide ligand dependent conformational transition during the activation of this GPCR. We employed the unsupervised machine learning based Markov state modeling approach to make reliable predictions. Basically, our model data provides insights into the thermodynamics and kinetic features of binding of known and designed peptide to GPCR and provide rules towards the development of an effective new dual peptide based API formulation. 
So the overall abstract is how machine learning can assess the interpretation of classical molecular dynamic simulations. Here we demonstrate how class VGPCR activation kinetics can be studied in atomic detail by combining molecular dynamic simulation with Markov state modeling. The overall idea here is to provide with an integrative approach and workflow for the predictive modeling of long time scale dynamics of GPCR system using machine learning based modeling to analyze physics based simulation. For more information, please check post number P37.